Hello, and in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about the mistakes I see people make when starting out in deal sourcing. My name is Mark Fitzgerald, and it's fantastic to have you joining me here at the Property Unleashed YouTube channel. Today, we've got a really good topic and one that I see a lot of people making mistakes on, particularly when they're starting out in their deal sourcing careers or they're starting a deal sourcing business. And why do we see this constantly all the time? Well, there could be a lot of information out there that is potentially sending people down the wrong route or people just aren't getting educated in the line of what they're looking to try and do. But for me, when you're deal sourcing, when you're packaging up deals, when you're looking for investors to do that with, there's some fundamentals that are the same in any sort of business that you're starting up. And one of them has to be answer the customer's problems. So you know what I mean? So I do rent to rent uh, predominantly, but I do package up the odd deal. I, I'm not a deal sourcer. Uh, by no means, you know, I might pass a lead on or stuff like that. I'll just send people in the right direction. I'm not a deal sourcer, but I do talk to a lot of deal sources and I see professional deal sourcers set up compliant, really doing a fantastic job, creating a lot of wealth, a lot of money in their businesses and for themselves and also for their customers. You've got to think of your investors, the people that are going to buy your deals as your customers. And you need to make sure that you set yourself up for success and that you're actually finding the problem or finding it, it what it is exactly that your customers need. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I see far too many people saying, I found this deal, who wants to buy it? Is it a good deal? It might be a good deal to you, but unless you have a customer, i.e. an investor, and you know exactly what it is, their criteria is, and what they're looking for, and sometimes you might say, well, I've got a below market value deal, uh, it's a no-brainer for somebody to, to, to buy. It might not be in the right area. It might not be the type of property that a certain investor that you're around wants. So you need to make sure you have a customer. And I would say have a customer first. It's so much easier to go out there and find deals for people when you know the specifics of what they want. What return on investment do they want? What ROI are they looking for? What sort of property do they want? Do they want a single let property? Do they want an HMO property? Do they want a, com um, a commercial unit, a commercial property? Are they looking to put uplift in it? Are they looking to add value to the property? Does it have to have a certain amount of land around it? Does it have to be in a certain area and there's other areas they're not interested in? Until you know that, that, you cannot really refine your search and offer a really good deal sourcing service to your customers. So as I say, when you're involved in property and you're out doing viewings, you don't necessarily have to be a deal sourcer. We're all deal sources. As I say, I see a lot of deals and I have a lot of deals coming my way and I can't do all those deals uh, and I don't want to do all those deals because they don't suit my criteria. But in networking, in being in an, an enclosed group with trusted other investors, you can post those deals there and see if they interest somebody else. As I've always said on this channel and everywhere, I'm a massive believer in what goes around comes around. And I do think that by helping others and passing on deals in their area, they're going to be more inclined. In fact, they're just going to be inclined to pass deals on to me when they don't need them because it's not in their area. But if you are going to be a deal sourcer, you're going to be set up for one. There's a few key things that you need to remember. And one is, of course, fees that we charge. A lot of people say, well, I'll, I'll charge a grand and a half. I'll charge three grand. Look at the deals that you're actually looking to pass on and sell. Because if you're looking at each deal and you're saying to an investor, basically, I can, I can make you a deal that's, that's worth a million pounds. All I ask for is 10% of that. You could do a deal for them. You could find a property that maybe has a big uplift. Uh, you know, this is extreme numbers. You could do it for 100 grand. If somebody was going to bring a deal to me that was going to make me 100 grand, I'd be happy out of that 100 grand to pay that person 10%. £10,000 if it was a hundred grand to give me a deal that's going to make me 90000 You turn that into the millions, which I was talking to then, somebody might be happy to pay you £100,000 to make them 900000 Now, those are extremes, 
But what we've got to do is put it really into perspective of a percentage that you're happy to earn. And if you're happy to earn 5%, 3% or 10%, your percentage will be lower when you start out. But as you start to find better deals that are worth more to the investors, make sure you're valuing that. And you're not just saying, oh, it's three grand, it's, it's a grand and a half, it's, it's this every time. There's a lot more work that goes into deal sourcing than people realize. You've got to remember, finding a deal and actually negotiating on a deal is not even half the battle. You've got solicitors, potentially architects, planning. You've got all sorts of things that are going to go on in the background and can potentially go wrong. People pulling out, things happening in the world that just scares everybody so that the deals don't actually happen. And you shouldn't be getting paid realistically until... The deal is signed, sealed and delivered and the money is, so to speak, in the bank. The property has been bought or sold in whichever case you're doing it. And that's when you get paid. So it can be a long road. A lot of people get in a deal sourcing, think they can go on right move, find a deal. And you potentially can, don't get me wrong. But you still shouldn't be getting paid and you shouldn't be holding money in your own account. It should be going into a client account until the deal is signed, sealed and delivered. And that's what I'm saying. You've got to make sure you set yourself up with all the compliances that you need to be a professional business, to be a professional deal sourcer. But equally, make sure that you are charging a good fee for the deal. Because if you brought a deal to me that was worth hundreds of thousands of pounds, which most deals will be, and you wanted three grand for it, I'd be thinking, hang on a minute. What's the matter with this deal? It can't be all of that because you only want three grand. Whereas if you were saying, I can make you X amount, but my fee is 10% of that, I would be thinking to myself, that's a pretty good deal. This deal also wants to get paid good money. And if they can keep bringing deals to me that are going to make me the money that I want, then I'll buy those ones all day long. So make sure you get your fees nailed. At the beginning, you might charge less and that's fine. As you get better, as you get better deals, make sure that your investors that you're working with are aware that the fees may change as the deals get better, as you're growing your business, so that you're not shocking them by all of a sudden having a having a 3% fee or a 5% fee of the deal, and all of a sudden it goes up to 8, 9, 10%, 12% potentially. Make sure they're aware that as the deals get better and you can make them more money and bring them better properties and assets for them to invest in, that your fees will be in line with that. As I said before, it's also about knowing what a good deal is. And how do you really know what a good deal is? Well, below market value is always a good um, range to start from. If you can get a discount on a property, then potentially it's a good deal. But likewise, don't just look for that. If you can get one that's at market value, but you can add uh, or you can uplift it so that it's worth more, that is a good deal as well. But like I said at the beginning of this video, make sure you go out there, you look at your investors, you talk to your investors, you have a pack for your investors and you ask them what it is they're looking for. And now if an investor says to you, I'm not 100% sure, just find me something, that's not somebody I'd work with. I would look for clients that know what they're after, know what they're looking for, and then see if I can deliver for that client. And as I say, you bring a client, you bring an investor, what they're looking for, and what you know is a good deal, they will buy them all day long. And you won't ever be thinking or asking people, you know, if I find a deal, would you be interested? Yeah, 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 show me the deal. They show you, you find a deal, you show it to them. Ah, it's not what I'm looking for. Why waste all that time? Get specific, get the details, find the deals. And of course, make sure you set yourself up in the proper manner. Make sure that you're fully compliant as a deal source. So there's some fantastic books on the subject. Obviously, you can go and do training courses and things like that as well. But make sure that you do invest in yourself and that you know that you've got all your compliances in place because you can get yourself into a lot of trouble packaging up deals and doing deals if you don't. So a little caveat for that there. Also, work on building up that investor client base. You know, investors don't just need to have one deal sourcer. You know, if, if you're a savvy investor, you probably have a few, a few different um, potential deal sources that you'd be looking at. Now, you might not work with them all and you might not have the funds to use them all, but I would like to see, and I do like to see, different deals coming from different people and that you start to see what they're finding, whether they're finding good quality stuff or whether they're just really just out there scattergunning it that's not the sort of people that I want to work with. So like I say, make sure you've got your specifics. Make sure you're set up compliant. Make sure you're not just running around saying to people, I'm a deal sourcer. Because 
We see this all the time now. You know, any networking event you go to or, or anything involved property, I'm a deal sourcer, I've got deals. Uh, some people might even show you some deals. I'd rather, if somebody was going to do that, show me deals that they've done. So I, I don't really want to look at a pack of deals that you've got now because that says to me you've got no client base, you've got no nobody really valuing you or trusting you. I'd rather see, you know, potentially deals that you've sold to investors. What was the return on that and how did it work out? Now, if you're new and starting out, it is about building up the credibility. And I tell you what, by opening a pack and saying, right, Mr. Fitzgerald, what is it you're looking for? Um, because potentially if I come across it, and it hits your criteria, it hits your return on investment, it's in the area that you're looking at, would you be inclined to invest in it? What am I going to say? Uh, yeah, I'm a property investor, and as long as I have the funds available, and it's a good deal that hits these criteria that I'm telling you that I want to hit now, let's do a deal. Saves all the middleman, also looks, you look more professional, and that's how you can build a profitable, successful deal sourcing business. I hope a few of the tips and tricks that I told you in here help you today. Also, check the show notes as I do offer some property investing freebies, so to speak, some downloadable guides that can help you a deal, analyze and spreadsheet, which if you're looking for deals, that is the perfect thing to download. Most people will charge you for this. I don't. You can download it free of charge. You can stack your deals, make sure that they add up, make sure that they work for you. That is available in the show notes or it is available at my website, which is the propertyunleashed.com website. So you can go on there, download it. And there's some other guides, a 10 step rent to rent guide uh, and a viewings guide as well, which which can help you obviously when you're out there building up and looking at securing these deals. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video. You'll take care, invest with skill and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.